So I hope someone as calm as Sun Johuin will be by Se Jun's side, preventing him from doing anything harmful to himself. Returning to the current timeline, as the brick aimed at Young Wo's face was about to hit him, Sun Johuin used his entire body to forcefully push Se Jun, causing him to stop his action. It was indeed an action without considering the consequences. Se Jun, enraged and disregarding sides, retaliated against Sun Johuin's interference by attempting to punch him, but Sun Johuin swiftly dodged. You attempted to calm Se Jun down with gentle advice, but at this point, Se Jun seemed to have lost all reason. He charged straight towards Sun Johuin, declaring that everyone in this group must die. So don't even try to stop me. Sun Johuin swiftly dodged Se Jun's clenched fist and delivered a powerful blow to his abdomen, nothing more than a body shot that calmed him down. Se Jun's pain and collapse seemed to bring him back to his senses. Sun Johuin reminded him that if he didn't want to end up in prison and ruin his idol actor career, he shouldn't engage in such foolish actions, letting emotions take control like that. He urged Se Jun to remember his ultimate goal. Se Jun, holding his stomach, stood up, acknowledging his mistake, I know, hitting hard like that, what was I thinking? Afterward, Se Jun turned to Young Wo and asked about the next development in the story. Young Wo hesitated before speaking, saying that the fight was still ongoing because Se Ohajin had not yet fainted. Se Jun gritted his teeth and asked, so who is her final opponent? Young Wo himself couldn't recall the exact name of the opponent. It seemed to be a representative from Han, who was also the madman who forced her to participate in the fight. In the final match, they only compared Jiu-Jitsu. Upon hearing this, Se Jun immediately asked Sun Johuin about the sponsor he mentioned earlier. He was also one of the players. Upon hearing this, Se Jun immediately knew that his target was that person. But information about him was scarce. Sun Johuin was also not well informed. It was then that Young Wo mentioned hearing some rather interesting news. Although it was just a rumor circulating among the athletes, before Young Wo could finish, he was abruptly hit with a knee to the face. Indeed, this was the security guard at that time. Amidst the surprise of Sun Johuin and Se Jun, Kin appeared. Wasn't he the one who emphasized the need for everything to be kept secret? Sun Johuin, the athlete, hesitated, not understanding why he was here. Of course, it was to deal with those who violated their commitments, Kin said. Se Jun immediately questioned, So you're following us? Kin chuckled falsely already dropping formalities on their first encounter, just as rude as he had heard. Se Jun wondered, do you know me? He laughed amusingly, of course I know, you must be Se Ohajin's boyfriend. Lost weight and looking handsome. Se Jun didn't let the deceitful parrot finish its sentence before grabbing his collar and demanding to know why they were treating Se Ohajin like that. The solemn manager looked out calmly, it's okay, we were just having a little chat. It turned out that at some point, the tall guy had silently stood behind him. Sun Joe Hine stepped in front of him, reminding him to quickly back off, this was a threat. The giant didn't hesitate to retreat. Continuing the conversation with Kin, he answered Se Jun's previous question. The purpose was clear, it was for money, nothing else. The keywords enough to stimulate thousands of viewers. Those without morals are ready to pay for this. All just for money, is that why people's children turn out like this? When Se Jun was about to raise his fist to punch the manager, Sun Zhou Hine suddenly got hit in the face by the giant behind him. Indeed, he was a heavyweight boxer. Sun Zhou Hine could roughly analyze, his body was large, movements heavy, so all you needed was agility to land a punch. But your punch meant nothing to him he looked down on you. When a villain stands with the righteous, it means he has become weak. Just as you were about to step forward to help, the manager delivered shocking news to Se Jun. 
to add to the excitement. He kindly informed the athlete of a threat to Seo Hajin in the second match, revealing her current whereabouts as a small surprise gift. The manager laughed mockingly, wondering how Seo Hajin's home could be so close to this place. So, who are you going to choose? Your beloved Seo Hajin or your teammate Sun Jo Hine? Sun Johuin yelled loudly, wasting no time as he swiftly ran towards Seo Hajin. But when he turned back, Sejun had already lost track of the ball, so why did Sun Johuin need to tell him where to go? On the street, a suspicious figure was closely trailing Seo Hajin. It seemed like she didn't sense the imminent danger. Lin Dung Huin felt indignant. Wasn't there anywhere this kid needed to be disciplined? How could they still be smiling so carelessly while he was seething with anger like this? As the Lin Dung Huin was slowly approaching her, a loud voice echoed, calling out to Seo Hajin, causing both her and the other person to startle. It turned out to be Seo Hajin's father, who hurriedly ran to his daughter's side. Seeing no more prey, Lin Dung Huin promptly left. Worried about the safety of his daughter, he firmly escorted her home. When she wasn't paying attention, he glanced over to where Lin Dung Huin had just left. At that moment, he was lurking angrily behind a wall. Suddenly, Seo Hajin's phone rang, it was a CJUN calling. Upon learning that she was with her father, he sighed in relief and said, that's good then. On the other end of the line, Sejun was sweating profusely. He lied to her, saying he was just exercising and promised to text her later when he got home. Sejun was worried that the other person was still lurking around her house, so he planned to make another trip there. Seo Hajin arrived home with her father, who reminded her to invite Sejun over for a meal sometime. Excitedly, she promised to treat him to a beef dish for sure. The father and daughter exchanged a few teasing remarks as the elevator reached their floor. Lim Dung Huin stood below, paying attention to where the elevator stopped and counting to determine which floor it was on, thereby pinpointing Seo Hajin's residence. He seemed to have figured it out, it was the first block of the 13th floor. He called KIN to inform him about this development and reminded him of their previous agreement. He didn't forget what Lim Dung Huin wanted and also cautioned him to be careful not to get caught in the process. Just by fabricating some evidence, the victim's side wouldn't be able to do anything. He thought that perhaps Lim Dung Huin hadn't confronted Southeast JUN yet, but regardless, he had already given Sejun a photo of him. After finishing with the machine, it was time for him to share the story with Sun Johuin, the national team player. He hoped that after being beaten up a bit, Sejun would be willing to cooperate and have a casual chat with him. Lin Dung Huin still felt a bit regretful, he thought he could have resolved everything today. As he was about to light a cigarette, a figure swiftly passed by and bumped into him. Feeling irritated, he turned around to curse, eyes are for decoration, huh, you jerk. Sejun quickly apologized, explaining that he wasn't paying attention while walking and accidentally knocked the cigarette out of his hand, but he didn't pick it up promptly. Sejun remained very polite. Bending down to pick up the cigarette, unaware of whether Lim Dung Huin engaged in sports or not. His physique seemed quite athletic, but Sejun didn't know what kind of sports he practiced. Lim Dung Huin replied that he also engaged in some exercise. Sejun chuckled and complimented him, saying he looked really cool and asked if he went to the gym. Lim Dung Huin smiled with amusement, saying, My muscles are a mix of flexibility and strength, and they're pretty toned. How can those gym guys compare? Kickboxing is a sport for real men, he was saying when his face took a strong punch from Sejun. Even as he fell backward, he was still bewildered by what the darn kid was up to. He coldly asked him, Are you the miserable guy Kayan sent? Lin Dung Huin assumed a defensive stance and replied, I don't know who you are, but today you won't have peace with me. He gathered momentum, intending to throw a high kick, but Sejun immediately spotted the vulnerability. 
he had to strike with a strong blow to diminish his opponent's will. Therefore, he decisively aimed a direct kick at Lim Dung Hwin's groin. Lim Dung Hwin's tears and mucus streamed down as he doubled over in pain. He held his groin tightly. Unable to utter a curse at Sejun looking down from above, Sejun warned him about his intentions to linger around Seo Hajin. Lim Dung Hwin paid no attention. Sejun threatened him, making it clear that he knew exactly what he was doing to people passing by. It seems like he still didn't know Sejun's true identity. Therefore, he didn't show any respect either. He used his foot to press down on his head and then forcefully kicked, causing his face to collide directly with the concrete ground. Lim Dung Hwin screamed loudly, blood continuously spraying from his nose. Sejun warned him not to pretend, saying, you're the kickboxer who attacked Seo Hajin. Lim Dung Hwin held his mouth with one hand and assumed a defensive stance with the other, shouting loudly that he didn't know anyone named Seo Hajin. Sejun leaned on his chin, contemplating deeply, did I make a mistake? Are you really not the person Kian mentioned? Lim Dung Hwin insisted, claiming he didn't know anything about Kian. Slowly standing up, Lim Dung Hwin criticized Sejun for his disrespectful speech and attacking an innocent person. He threatened to call the police if Sejun didn't wait and see. He raised his phone and glanced at Sejun. Suggesting that if he pretended to call the authorities, Sejun would cry and run away, wouldn't he? Sejun's face hardened in response, seemingly indicating that Lim Dung Hwin misunderstood, he was just a naive fool, and Sejun apologized for the confusion. After that, he punched Lim Dung Hwin again, straight in the face. Sejun continued to mock him, acting out his ridiculous behavior, waving his arms and legs chaotically, asking if he wanted to eat prison food. Sejun laughed scornfully, saying, you definitely can't report me. Seeing Lim Dung Hwin's confusion, he quickly explained that he had only mentioned a representative, not specifically HN as a representative, since earlier. So stop playing around, you jerk. You'd better focus on me. Lim Dung Hwin regretted that he could have landed a sucker punch from behind, but it seemed like he had been discovered. However, he still wondered who Sejun really was and what relationship he had with the girl Seo Hajin. Sejun spoke bluntly, saying, you don't need to know those things. The only thing you need to know right now is that I'll make sure you won't have legs to exercise with anymore. Lin Dung Hwin sneered arrogantly, thinking he was good at fighting. He scoffed, believing that Sejun was being ridiculous for trying to bring him down with such a weak punch. To prove his point, Sejun immediately threw another punch towards him. However, this time it wasn't as easy as before. Lim Dung Hwin swiftly dodged back to avoid it. Then, he rapidly punched Sejun's face multiple times, telling him to wake up and stop daydreaming. He paused abruptly, intending to kick Sejun with his leg, but then he stepped back. Sejun noticed this and smirked, saying, can't kick me, huh? Hearing this, Lin Dung Hwin became furious and charged at Sejun, throwing several punches at him in rapid succession. However, Sejun defended himself very securely against each of them. Sejun felt that Lin Dung Hwin's punch was quite powerful, showing that he had undergone proper training. However, compared to Sun Johuyn's punch, both in speed and force, it was much weaker. Therefore, Sejun could easily block his punch at the right moment. Immediately, Sejun lowered himself, aiming at Lim Dung Hwin's shin. Sejun intended to use a technique to bring him down. But at that moment, Lim Dung Hwin lifted his leg and kicked Sejun off balance. Calmly, he said, I was just pretending to be dumb. You look no different from a stupid dog. Less than a second later, he trembled, holding his groin, seemingly in pain from exerting too much force. He turned to curse at Sejun's face, then swiftly used his leg to flip Sejun over as he fainted, and raised his leg. 
In that split second, as tension hung in the air, a figure rushed forward, cutting through and knocking down Lin Dung Huin. He was knocked down several times for no apparent reason, infuriating him. Who was this dog? Wait, are you talking about me? I am a police officer from the Republic of Korea. Lin Dung Huin was stunned, feeling uneasy about the situation if he were dealing with a police officer. The police officer stepped forward, advising him to cooperate and not make things difficult for both of them. Before he could finish his sentence, Lin Dung Huin swiftly turned around and fled. It seemed like his fear outweighed the pain from his lower body. As the police officer turned around to ask if everything was all right, he suddenly realized that this was Se Jun, the student. Se Jun woke up from his temporary faint and thanked the police officer, saying he was fine and didn't need to go to the hospital for a checkup. The police officer also shared that Seo Hajin's father had called to report a suspicious person following his daughter, so the officer came to check the situation. It was fortunate that he happened to pass by Se Jun just in time. The officer mentioned the person from earlier, asking if he was related to the Seo Hajin case, but Se Jun chose to remain silent. The police officer advised Se Jun to cooperate with him so that the case could be resolved quickly and Se Jun wouldn't get involved in any legal troubles. Se Jun politely declined, saying he would report any information to the police if he had any, and they should do what they could. As for himself, Se Jun smiled and said, I will do what I have to do. At the meeting with Seo Hajin, Se Jun felt lucky that his injuries had healed quickly. Otherwise, he wouldn't know what excuse to give for the bruises. He felt that the guy's kick wasn't too strong, but his speed in delivering the kick was quite fast. Indeed, Se Jun underestimated his opponent. Perhaps he should find another way because this wasn't working out, suddenly, Seo Hajin appeared in the frame, startling him. Seo Hajin teased him, jokingly asking if he was trying to sneak a picture of some other girl. Seo Hajin playfully raised her phone for a selfie, but then quickly denied it, saying he was just picking his nose, not taking any pictures. Seo Hajin immediately pulled his head down, suggesting they take a commemorative photo together. The resulting picture captured Se Jun's awkward expression perfectly, showing that it couldn't be taken politely at all. However, Seo Hajin was determined not to give up. She insisted on getting a proper photo of the two of them. After some chaos, they ended up going to the cinema. Se Jun felt somewhat relieved knowing that Seo Hajin could now comfortably be in crowded places, even though she still seemed a bit shy and surprised about something from time to time. Seo Hajin seemed to have changed so well that strangers wouldn't notice if they didn't pay attention. Se Jun believed that Seo Hajin was a resilient girl. So if she had to struggle with herself, she would not easily be defeated. In order for Seo Hajin to recover in a safe environment, Se Jun had to completely eliminate all dangers from the outside. To achieve this, he had to become stronger and develop a rational and clear-headed mind. If this were a game, he would surely be in a high-level area, and if he didn't want to keep losing, he had to defeat all enemies at an equivalent level to level up. At the gym, a brown-haired trainee burst into laughter gleefully, and the victim here was none other than Sun Johyn. He pointed at Sun Johyn's shirt and laughed as if he couldn't breathe properly, saying boxing is the best indeed. Ahson wanted to keep a straight face for him, so he stood beside him, stifling his laughter until his body shook with suppressed mirth. Sun Johyn looked puzzled, wondering what was so funny. Was he mocking boxing? All three of them stared at him in shock. It's true that there hasn't been any progress in your sense of humor at all. Sun Johyn retorted immediately, Hey, you've got some humor too. But young man, don't be stubborn. You have to face your inner self and admit your flaws. You're as bland as plain water. While they were joking, Se Jun peeked his head in from outside, and Ahson wondered, didn't you ask for time off? What are you doing here? At this moment, Seo Hajin popped out from behind Se Jun. 
Her appearance made everyone much happier. She ran over to A.H.S.O.N. and asked how he's been lately. Still good, right? Come here, let me give you a hug to cheer you up. Surprised by S.E.O. Hajin's sudden attack, he quickly dodged backwards, saying, not now. I just finished working out, I'm all sweaty. Nevertheless, S.E.O. Hajin didn't care. She rushed towards A.H.S.O.N. S.E.O. Hajin sat up with a surprised expression on her face. The brown-haired student, Sun J.O.H.U.I.N., introduced her, saying that when it comes to this guy, the exact four words, boxing is the best, are enough to make Sun J.O.H.U.I.N.'s face turn black. Both S.E.O. Hajin and S.E.J.U.N. couldn't help but laugh at this cuteness. S.E.O. Hajin wondered, aren't you learning jiu-jitsu? Why boxing? A.H.S.O.N. nodded, understanding S.E.J.U.N.'s request. He turned to Sun J.O.H.U.I.N. and explained that they were just discussing the incident when he was kicked. A.H.S.O.N. asked if Sun J.O.H.U.I.N. could share all the information about the kick from a standing position. In return, he promised to help S.E.J.U.N. with whatever he needed. Sun J.O.H.U.I.N. agreed, saying he would gladly share his knowledge and experiences. The manager cried profusely before embracing S.E.O. Hajin tightly, then tenderly inquired about his well-being. Must be because you've taken a long break from training, causing you to gain weight, huh? S.E.O. Hajin's face flushed, choosing not to add any further words to prevent straining the teacher-student relationship. Immediately after, he laughed heartily, hugged the manager, and jokingly remarked that it was just a joke, unsure whether it was taken seriously or not. Sun J.O.H.U.I.N., upon seeing the manager, was surprised and wide-eyed, asking if he was indeed the player Juan Dio K.H.E. It seemed like the mysterious identity of the man in the green cap had been unveiled. He is indeed one of the professional boxers from Korea. Everyone in the gym stared at him in disbelief, wondering if it was true, such a cool and remarkable identity. It was clear that he had introduced himself a long time ago, but it seemed like none of us had paid attention to his words. Sun J.O.H.U.I.N. stood in awe, reverently expressing, speaking of Juan D.O.K.H.E., he once held a record of 20 consecutive wins before retiring within the same year at the peak of his career. A true legend of the Korean boxing scene, Juan D.O.K.H.E. Though I don't like to boast, that amazing person is me. The atmosphere in the gym became solemn and reflective, with no one speaking afterward. SEO Hajin excitedly suggested, if that's the case, let's treat everyone to spicy takbaki. Juan Dokhe remained stunned, asking without much interest what the fuss was about. However, by Sun Johuin's side, his eyes sparkled with admiration, gazing at him like an adoring puppy, he was the ideal role model in his dreams. Juan Dokhe had heard a bit about Sun Johuin's story as well, wondering if he minded. He pointed out that this gym wasn't just about teaching boxing. Sun J.O.H.U.I.N. remained ecstatic, assuring him that he wasn't concerned at all. Even if he had to scrub toilets, he would gladly do it as long as he could be near his idol. Juan D.O.K.H.E. chuckled, telling him to relax and offering to assist A.H.S.O.N. If needed, they could use sandbags or any equipment they wanted. Then, everyone headed out together to eat takbaki. S.E.J.U.N. and S.E.O. Hajin walked side by side, with S.E.J.U.N. teasingly commenting on how much S.E.O. Hajin ate, jokingly comparing him to a pig. Just a while ago, S.E.J.U.N. himself used to be as chubby as a pig. S.E.J.U.N. then curiously asked S.E.O. Hajin if it's true that any man close to him could be embraced like that. It was merely a simple curiosity, he added. S.E.O. Hajin blushed playfully, teasingly asking if S.E.J.U.N. was feeling jealous now that he's all grown up. S.E.J.U.N. could only drum up excuses, insisting it was time to head home. During the break at school, S.E.J.U.N. urged Sun J.O.H.U.I.N. to quickly teach him that particular kick. Sun J.O.H.U.I.N. hesitated when it came to the name Lim Dung Huin, he was a seasoned kickboxing player, and S.E.J.U.N. probably wouldn't stand a chance against him. 
However, Sun Jouyin clarified that Sejun wasn't going to compete but rather engage in a street fight. So the outcome is still unknown which way it will lean. From now on, Southeast Jun must stick close to you 24 hours a day, then familiarize himself with the rapid punch technique, while also scanning low-ranking opponents to gain experience. Sun Jouyin asked if you knew the most basic thing about boxing or not. You hesitated, thinking whoever lands a stronger punch and strikes first wins, right? No, that's not it. That's the skipping rope skill. The important thing lies in the footwork, the rhythm of the feet is the biggest difference between someone who learns boxing and someone who doesn't. For example, when Sejun grasps the rhythm of his opponent, you can completely lure him into throwing a punch to the right and then quickly dodge to the left. Then, with all your strength, BAM, punch him in the face. Sejun is stunned, wondering why he suddenly got punched like that. Sun Jouyin sees this and apologizes, never expecting you to be so clueless as to not dodge that basic punch. So, starting today, Sejun will have to practice skipping rope in his spare time. Sun Jouyin laughs happily and then leaves. And so, the training session begins. Sejun runs frantically after Sun Jouyin, then immediately starts skipping rope hundreds of times, followed by hanging a tennis ball over his head to practice counterattacks. Each time he misses, he gets hit in the face by the ball, and at the same time, Sun Jouyin scolds him as a fool. And finally, they practice attacking each other, time passes by gradually, with each day repeating the same steps. Both lie down exhausted, and Sun Jouyin asks Sejun if he has any aspirations after completing the task of Seo Hajin. Sejun isn't sure. He hasn't set any goals beyond that. This answer aligns with Sun Jouyin's expectations, so he gets up and directly moves on to the next phase of training. In a small alley, two students, one chubby and one skinny, are walking and chatting happily. Suddenly, Sejun calls him back, hey, suk pork, and before the chubby one can even ask what's going on, Sejun throws a straight punch to his face. This is the next phase of Sun Jouyin's plan, real combat. Suk Pig holds his face in pain and laughs as if he's been shocked by a nerve. He stands up, improvising, normally in this situation, someone else would ask, who are you, right? But I won't ask. Do you know why? Hearing this, Sejun immediately punches him, yeah, probably because your dad cares, huh? Suk Pig is annoyed, you gotta let others finish talking first. Sejun, disgusted, retorts, shut up and take it, simply because I find your pants repulsive. The chubby one stares blankly and asks, do you even understand what fashion is? If that tight piece of junk is considered fashion, then I'd rather remain ignorant for the rest of my life, Sejun declares before delivering several consecutive punches. The chubby one, infuriated, retaliates, next move, I'll show you how to write the word, courtesy. Sejun is stunned by his attack, recalling Sun Jouyin's words. In judo, if you're thrown to the ground, it means you're in danger. So the basic principle is not to let the opponent grab you. Is that why we practice retreating like those clueless fools? Sun Jouyin reminds Sejun to always maintain a certain distance from the opponent. So in that moment, he should utilize his long arms and his own speed to punch before the opponent grabs his collar. When that doesn't work, the opponent will likely switch their target to Sejun's lower body. At this point, quickly step back to block their attack and decisively finish the match. But if caught, don't expect to escape the grip of someone who practices judo. Suk Pig laughs arrogantly, saying that playing around is enough. From that moment on, there's no such thing as martial arts anymore, just targeting each small body part, dislocating each of his fingers is enough. Suk Pig didn't expect Sejun to play dirty like that. He screams in pain as his fingers are twisted out of shape. 
Se Jun doesn't give him a moment's rest, he swings his fist straight into the pig's face, resolving one opponent. The skinny accomplice sees this and charges forward, but Se Jun smoothly sidesteps, pivots behind him, delivers a strong blow to his back, then swiftly switches targets, delivering a full force punch to the next guy. The second, third, and fourth opponents are all swiftly dealt with. Sejun returns to the training room with a face full of wounds and trembling hands. Seeing this, Sun Johuin suggests he take a break. Sejun immediately refuses, insisting on continuing training, he doesn't have much time left. Sun Johuin advises him that even if he makes progress, he might not be a match for Lim Dung Hwin yet, so he should steadily improve his skills. Sejun interrupts, saying no, this week he will go find him, he can't let Seo Hajin live in danger like this. At this moment, outside, Ahson stands silently behind the gym door. On the streets of South Korea, Seo Hajin's parents and siblings are all there to welcome her. Their excuse is to create some family memories. On the occasion of their 20th wedding anniversary, her father will generously see her off to school and then go eat beef with his wife. Seo Hajin bristles like a stepped-on cat's tail, refusing vehemently. Behind them, Lim Dung Hwin seethes with jealousy, acting as if he's the only one with a family. Unable to find the right opportunity, he angrily pulls out a cigarette, he won't give up easily. Suddenly, the police officer representing righteousness steps forward, do you know this is a no-smoking area? Because he's not wearing a uniform, Lim Dung Hwin becomes arrogant, questioning why everyone crossing the street is concerned about him. Who does he think he is? A police officer, perhaps? Oh. How did you guess? The old uncle doesn't hesitate to show his police ID in front of him. Lim Dung Hwin's attitude suddenly changes 180 degrees, he turns around with a gentle smile, saying it was just a little misunderstanding. As he's about to slip away, the officer requests him to stay and show his ID for verification. He fakes smiles, hoping the officer will let him off this time and promises not to repeat his offense. The police uncle pays no attention to his words, he sternly describes Lim Dung Hwin, height 1. 7 meters, identifying features, red hair, slightly dull-looking black eyes. He says this while Lim Dung Hwin is taken aback. Lim Dung Hwin stammers, insisting it's not him, but the police uncle doesn't want to waste time and demands to see his ID, sensing trouble, Lim Dung Hwin turns and runs. Both of them chase each other down the street, but Lim Dung Hwin seems to underestimate the speed of the police officer. The officer accelerates suddenly, closing in on him. Suddenly, a car rushes onto the sidewalk, positioning itself between Lim Dung Hwin and the police officer. The driver sticks his head out and reminds Lim Dung Hwin, get in, K.I.N. wants to see you. You have five minutes before I drive off. Lim Dung Hwin quickly jumps into the car without hesitation, and the car speeds away, leaving the police officer feeling helpless. Lim Dung Hwin is elated, feeling incredibly lucky at the perfect timing of this encounter. The driver tells him to shut up and summarizes two things for him. As he takes off his hat and jacket, he explains, Firstly, you're still young and the law is giving you a chance for rehabilitation and correction. The second thing. Ahson turns around and says, Trash like you deserves to be torn into a hundred pieces and fed to the dogs. Lim Dung Hwin senses something is off and tries to open the car door, but it's locked. Ahson continues lecturing him, but Lim Dung Hwin refuses to listen and threatens to open the door himself or he'll call the police. Ahson warns him not to act rashly, reminding him that he'll encounter someone stronger eventually, and his life will go downhill from there. But it seems like you've brought that distance closer to yourself now, right at this moment. Lim Dung Hwin screams in anger, shut up and open the door for me. He tries to swing his fist towards Ahson, but he's blocked, and Ahson grabs him by the collar, pressing him down onto the car. As he looks up, he sees Ahson holding a sharp axe ready to strike down on his head. He struggles and screams, 
but can't stop the axe from descending swiftly towards him. The camera angle returns to inside the car, the axe cleanly passes by his nose, embedding deep into the car's floor, leaving a gory wound with blood flowing profusely from Lim Dung Hwin's nose. Ahson calmly comforts him, don't worry. If someone like you goes straight to hell, you'll be tortured. Let me help you prolong your life. So, how about we start by chopping off one arm? I'll count to three, prepare yourself mentally. Perhaps in the imminent moment of death, Lim Dung Hwin's strength erupts, he kicks hard at Ah Sien's head and manages to escape his restraint. First, he needs to find a way to escape from this madman. He looks towards the car window, determined to smash it rather than die at the hands of this maniac. But the next scene isn't like those cheap action movies depict. Lin Dung Hwin's huge lump on his head is knocked back. Ahson remarks dryly, that's bulletproof glass, you idiot. If you want it that way, I'll change the location to the wilderness for some fresh air. When the car door is unlocked, Lin Dung Hwin wastes no time and dashes straight to the nearest police station. Fearful for his life, he stops and raises his middle finger to Ahson. I'm going to report you to the police, you dog, Lin Dung Hwin declares. The camera has recorded everything, so even if you wear a hat, it's still all there. But while he's mouthing off, he suddenly realizes, oh no, I have to run before. Ahson reflects quietly, he seems to know kickboxing, huh? Then I'll leave a little souvenir for those legs. He raises the axe high and swings straight down. As expected by the audience, the axe embeds itself directly into Lim Dung Hwin's buttocks, causing him to collapse to the ground. He cries out for help, is anyone there? Help me. Due to the commotion, Ahson kicks him in the face. He warns Lim Dung Hwin not to linger on that street anymore and to erase Seo Hajin's existence from his mind. If you defy me after knowing what I'm capable of, I'll make you quietly disappear from this world, or beg me to let you die, Ahson warns. Lim Dung Hwin trembles and pleads, promising to completely forget who Seo Hajin is if Ahson spares him. Ahson stands up and kicks him in the face, don't ever forget today. Lim Dung Hwin, covered in wounds, curses silently, wondering why there are so many people protecting that girl. Suddenly, he sees a girl leaning against the wall. When she notices Lim Dung Hwin's presence, she approaches to inquire about the wounds on his face. He pushes her hand away and says, Li Yong Gong, it's best you don't interfere in my affairs. The more you study, the more your purpose in martial arts is to do evil deeds, isn't it? Lim Dung Hwin shouts, you talk too much. If you teach, just focus on your job, why bother with other things? He points at her face, do you teach martial arts to do bad things? Well, you must not know that those bad things are very useful to people like us. Li Yong Gong feels a pang in her heart, realizing she has truly done her best. Lim Dung Hwin angrily raises his arm, intending to slap Li Yong Gong. He shouts, stop crying, you annoying pest. His arm is suddenly restrained, and Sejun says that if he doesn't know how to control this arm, he'll help him disable it. Lim Dung Hwin, realizing it's Southeast Jun, wonders how he knew about this place. Could it be Li Yong Gong who led him here? Li Yong Gong hesitates and says Cjun told her he's a friend of hers. She explains that she hasn't been going to school lately, so they couldn't keep in touch, and that's why she brought him here. Lin Dung Hwin yells, Friends! Are you stupid? Se Jun. To silence his loudmouth, punches the red button on Lin Dung Hwin's forehead. The lump is officially dented, and Lin Dung Hwin rolls around in pain. Sejun feels that big mouth guys like him should be taught a lesson to become less stupid. Li Yong Gong, sensing something is amiss, grabs Sejun's sleeve and asks if he's not a friend of Lim Dung Hwin. Sejun turns back to apologize to Li Yong Gong for lying to her. He admits that he also said Lim Dung Hwin wouldn't listen to her, even though she had helped him. 
Li Yong Gong continues to advise Sejun against using violence, emphasizing that everyone has different perspectives and that the victims of violence have to live in unimaginable fear. However, bullies have no qualms about inventing new methods of torture, so Sejun shouldn't hesitate to change his approach to deal with them effectively. This is your choice, Lim Dung Hwin negotiates, explaining that his health isn't good at the moment, and he asks if they could meet on another day. Concerned, Sejun asks, are you not feeling well? Lim Dung Hwin excitedly responds. Not at all. I just got back from the hospital. Sejun sighs and acknowledges the opportunity at hand. Lim Dung Hwin angrily exclaims that even if Sejun wins in his current state, he'll still be weak, and he challenges Sejun to face his dangerous punches. Sejun calmly searches for an opening, dodging the punch and swiftly hitting him in the side. Lim Dung Hwin suddenly stepped back, why does he seem more skilled than before? He's been learning boxing for a short time, but even so, if he lands a hit on you, you won't be able to do anything about it. That's the idea, but the sharp pain from the wound on my hip feels like a sudden burst of hemorrhoids. Just as I'm about to collapse, Sejun jumps up, thrusting a straight punch into his mouth and then slamming him directly to the ground. He declares that this time, he won't let him linger around Seo Hajin anymore. As he prepares to deliver the final blow, Li Yong Gong suddenly rushes out to shield Lim Dung Hwin. Sejun remains calm, telling her to step aside, he doesn't have the right to be protected like that. Li Yong Gong turns back, crying, if the kid has done wrong, let the law handle it, so please stop here. Sejun feels helpless, everyone knows she's right, but it's not feasible, so he had to go this far. Lim Dung Hwin, bruised and battered, sneers, are you all playing saintly roles here? Then he kicks Li Yong Gong to the side, stop pretending to be righteous, you old hag. Li Yong Gong's head hits the wall from the impact. Sejun rushes over and feels nothing but blood. Without hesitation, Sejun calls for an ambulance. At this point, Lin Dung Hwin has picked up a stick from somewhere and approaches Sejun from behind, striking his head forcefully. He sneers, just a little blood. No need to hurry, you won't die, you miserable fool. He continuously kicks Southeast Jun while expressing his disdain, you think you're all that just because you were born into a good family, living comfortably. He shouts, that woman is a hypocrite. When I needed help, she did nothing, but now she pretends to care and advise me. Sejun roughly understands that this is Lim Dung Hwin's deep-seated insecurity and inferiority complex at play. Struck by a pang of sympathy, Lim Dung Hwin momentarily lets his guard down. You think you're the victim. And the whole world owes you something, when they don't owe you anything, Sejun explains. Lim Dung Hwin still desires redemption, asking, do you even understand anything? Sejun doesn't hesitate to expose the truth, questioning why the world needs more people like him. But should they learn to be like you, he retorts. There will always be people who continue to strive, while you just sit there, using violence to satisfy yourself. Scum like you are nothing but failures, Sejun responds firmly. Lin Dung Hwin is taken aback, do you even understand anything? His punch is intercepted by Sejun's forearm, it's force enough to snap three of his fingers. Sejun grips his hand, acknowledging that he must still be grateful for revealing Lim Dung Hwin's irredeemable nature. Therefore, he doesn't need to hesitate anymore. The video ends here. Thank you all for your interest and for watching. See you in the next video, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much, everyone.